The information contained in this tutorial video can also be found on the Stern Center for Research Computing website at scrc.stern.nyu.edu. <coughs> Hello, it's Norman White here again. I want to go through uh, in sort of gory detail what it takes to load um, a file from a remote website <coughs> onto big data and then to move it into the HDFS and put a uh, table definition on top of it. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use uh, our Minnesota election data, which is sitting on in my website at Stern. So the first thing I need to do is I have to get the big data. So I'm going to SSH the big data. Log in. I'm going to cd to slash big temp under the assumption that I don't have enough disk space in my home directory to store the file. And then I'm going to get the data. So it's at www.stern.nyu.edu slash my Silver and white slash directory there called dealing slash mn results dot tx. It's about four and a half megabytes. And it's done. So let's just take a look at it. It'll be familiar to you. And if we look at those fields, we'll see as we go from <clears throat> as we go from left to right, um, up, I'm up on the top here. It's the state, the um, state number. Um, I'm sorry, the state, <clears throat> then the county number, then the precinct number within the county. I think we figured out. Then the election <clears throat> race number. Then the race name, <clears throat> U.S. President and Vice President, um, followed by a, a blank field, it looks like, <clears throat> followed by a number representing the candidates. So this 0501 is for Gary Johnson. Then the candidate names. And then two more fields that are blank, so we're going to ignore them. Then the name of the party. Then two more fields that have always have one and one in them that we're going to ignore. Then the number of votes in this precinct for that candidate or that those candidates, followed by the percent vote for them, followed by the total number of votes cast in that precinct. So that's the table that we want to create. So the first thing we need to do <clears throat> is we need to move this thing into big data. Um, and if we want to use Hive on it, we need to First, create a directory called election. And then I'm going to put the data into that directory. So now <clears throat> I've just copied the data from the big day, big temp directory into an HD, a directory in our Hadoop file system called election. And if I, and it's going to be in my default directory. And down here is election, right here. User light election. And we'll do an LSR on election, we should see, and there we have <clears throat> my data. So that data is, um, that's going to be our table that we want to use in Hive. So now I have to go define those fields. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, <clears throat> I'm going to use Emacs, 
Um, And I'm actually putting this in big temp so you guys can see it. So um, I'm creating a little sequence of SQL here to both create that table. And in my case, I'm also going to create a database. So I'm going to create a database called election. And then I'm going to create an external table called election dot in this case I just call it a I'll call it let's call it Minnesota election just a second here so I've called it an external table because it's not going to be an user hive warehouse I'm putting it in my directory so the fields are state and I'm going to make everything a string, just to be simple. Um, so state string, comma. Um, county string, comma. Precinct string, comma. Race string. Comma, race, name, string, comma. Um, I don't have a junk field here. I'll just call it junk string. That's the null field. Um, then we have candidate number. And I'll just make it a string. I can convert these things to numbers with a view on them um, later very easily. Then the candidate names. Oops. Um, another field that I want to ignore. Then yet another one I want to ignore. Not sure how to. Um, then the party. Democrat, Republican, whatever. Another field to ignore. Should be a way to skip fields, but I don't know how to do it. Um, and yet another one. Junk four. Ignore. <coughs> and the party. Can I just do that? Oh, whoops. I'm getting confused here. Hang on. Uh, oh, votes. Votes for. This is votes for that candidate. Um, then percent for. And total votes in that precinct. So that's the end of my definitions, but I'm not quite done yet because I now have to say where um, where in that uh, um, where in the HDFS is that file located. So if I remember right, it's row format delimited Fields, I always have to look this up. Fields terminated by, and as I remember, it was a colon between the fields. Or is it not? Uh, no, it's a semicolon between the fields. So a semicolon. Uh, it's a text file. That's the default. So I think I'm all I may have to do here is now just give it its location. And its location in the HDFS is slash user slash and white slash uh, what I call it election that's the <clears throat> that's the directory that has the table in it right this is the 
Um, so that's, we should be done. So I put a semicolon at the end of the last line there. Um, I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to do hive dash f create election dot sql. And I'll probably get an error because I always make typos or something. So I'm back again. It turns out I had some minor problems there. I want to show you what they were. Let's go into our so here's my file and I one problem I had was I had to ignore in here instead of string but the bigger problem I had th three different problems that I skipped over because it was taking me a while to figure them out um, one of them was the semicolon, since we're delimited by a semicolon, you notice that the semicolon ends a hive statement. So it was seeing this semicolon right here as the termination of the statement, and it had an error. So it said, you know, terminated by, quote, and that was it. So I had to escape it with a slash in front of it. Um, that was problem number two. Problem number one was I had ignore a typo in here called ignore. So let's get out of that. And problem number three, which I still haven't figured out, um, is when I tried to run this from big temp itself, from slash big temp, it didn't work. Um, <clears throat> so I had to run it uh, from my, my, uh, my directory. So let's, let's, uh, I've already run it, let's, let, let's uh, go into Hive. And now I have to use election, right, because I created a database called election. And I'll show tables. And there's MN election. So I'm going to drop MN election. Um, drop table and then election and I'll get out of hive and I'll create it again show you that it actually works. Okay, let's go back into Hive. Now notice that I have to since I didn't put the I didn't put the table in the in the default database, I created another database for it. I have to use that database name to get to things. So use election, show tables, here's my table. I'm going to describe, I think it's extended mn election and uh, in fact the describe format mn election which is what Daniel showed, showed us how to do last week now I don't remember the, the you know, describe just to describe what it tell me now. Help describe. No. Okay. But anyway, the table's there. So let's uh, let's just do select star from mn mn election. Ah, can't type. Uh, limit five. 
just to see what's out there. And there we have. So we notice um, <clears throat> there are fields. And if I describe, again, describe the table. So what do we want there? We want votes for. What I really want to do um, when I did it a second ago is I'd like to I'd like to total all the to the total votes for the votes for, and group group by the candidate names. So I'd like to <coughs> total this field and group the totals by candidate names and order them descending. Well, I already did that a minute ago. So let's see. So here I do the query, select some of the votes for as V4, so I'm renaming it, so I'm renaming that aggregate as V4, comma, C names, that's the candidate names, from Minnesota election, that's the table, and group by the candidate names, order by the votes for descending. This should tell us who won that election. Stay tuned. Here we are, running our mappers and reducers, still running locally. I haven't fixed that yet. That's my next task as soon as I finish this video. And voila. There we see that Barack Obama and Joe Biden indeed did win the election. They got 1,546,167 votes, and Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan got 1,320,225 votes. So we have completed our task. One last thing, I could have done this instead of the W get. Um, we'll go to R&D dot stern dot colon slash public underscore html slash dealing slash mn election dot text oops I think that's it to slash big temp No, it must be MN. I can't remember what the file name is at this point. It might be MN elections.txt. <coughs> um, but in any event, I could have just used the SCP command since I know where that file is. Oh, it's, um, it's actually, that's the problem. It's not slash public, it's public. Still no file. It's MN results, okay. And boom, copied it over. Now in your case, it would have prompted you for a password. So we can use either SCP or WGAT, or if you download, that's, that's going directly from big data to some external source. If you need to bring it down to your machine, to your Windows machine or a Mac, <coughs> you can save something and then FT, SFTP it to big data just remembering that if you're bringing it from a Windows machine, you then have to run the DOS to Unix command. That command. 
Okay, that should do us for now. Hopefully, you now can get data into HDFS. And as you can see, we've, we're done. We've now, I've now shown you how to copy files and or um, wget files from a remote site, bring them over to big data, then from big data to HDF, uh, to Hadoop FS dash, put them into the Hadoop file system and then in, into a directory, how we create the directory and how we put a table definition on top of it and that we can actually query things when we're done.